So we've got two phylums left to go. So our second to last one is phylum Echinodermata. And remember when we were looking through our prefixes and suffixes, echino meaning spiny uh, or prickly and derm meaning skin. So phylum Echinodermata literally means spiny skin. And when we talk about some of the examples, you'd be like, ah, that makes sense. Things with spiny skins. So this includes things such as sea stars uh, or starfish. If you guys were to say starfish for anything, I would take it. I just really try to stay away from it because there's so many animals that are named incorrectly because they're not fish or they're not crabs or they're not moss. So I use sea stars, uh, sea urchins, sand dollars, things called sea cucumbers. So a lot of different things, uh, but something that they kind of all have in common is they have some sort of spiny skin. Now their symmetry is weird. As an adult, they do have radial symmetry. And if you look at all of these organisms, now, this isn't a really good example, but if we look at the these two different sea star species, if we look at the sea urchin, they are radial. They don't have a front and a back. They don't have a left and a right. They do have a top and a bottom, similar to our other radial organisms, but that's it. But we've also been kind of going through these organisms by evolutionary history. So what gives? As larvae, they are bilateral. So that's a really, really important note. As larvae, these guys are bilateral. So we think that they have common ancestry with our other bilateral organisms. But for one reason or another, evolution and natural selection favored individuals that had more radial symmetry. And now we have phylum echinodermata. So because of this bilateral larvae, we think they have similar ancestry with other bilateral organisms. So radial as adults, bilateral as larvae. These guys are triploblasts, so we don't see a reversion of that, and they are eucelomates. Now we have now entered our deuterostomes. Uh, remember deutero meaning second and stome referring to mouth, so the mouth formed second, meaning that the anus formed first. And these guys, despite the fact that they have just a top and a bottom, they do have complete digestion. Their mouth is on one side of the organism and the anus is on the other side of the organism. So this is kind of a way they're different from jellyfish, whereas jellyfish had just one opening that served as both the mouth and anus as a radial organism. But these guys do have two separate openings because they do have complete digestion. Now, because we've reverted back to this radial symmetry, we don't have a centralized head region. There is no head. There is no pointing in one direction. This isn't to say that they don't have nerves or a central nervous system, but it's not really localized in one region. So the only thing we're going to talk about, and we actually won't talk about reproduction, I wanted to talk about how sea stars move, just because the way they move is so cool uh, and so awesome. So the way sea stars move is through something called a water vascular system. So you think of a vascular system as essentially a series of canals that move fluid through an organism. So if you think about the cardiovascular system in humans, we have a heart that pumps blood throughout the series of arteries and veins and capillaries. Well, in sea stars, they have a water vascular system where water is sucked in from the environment. It is pumped through the sea star and through the legs of the sea star. And it's actually used to move the sea star, which is pretty freaking cool. It's not muscles. Uh, it's not some other fluid that stays in the sea star. It is water they suck in from the environment. And they use that to push uh, the legs. Now the video is going to show this a lot better, but I do want to go ahead and just introduce some of the key terms and parts of the sea star anatomy that the video is going to bring up. So here we have the sea star. This is showing it where you would actually see it in the environment. So we're looking at the top half. On the top of the sea star, we will find two really important parts of the sea star. First off, the anus. Uh, it's really, really small, but just knowing that, again, there is a separate mouth and anus. 
The other structure, and this you can actually see on some of the specimens that I have, is the sieve plate. The sieve plate is actually where the water is going to be sucked in into the sea star. On the other side of the sea star, and there's not really an arrow because it's right below it, is the mouth. So the mouth is found in this central part just on the bottom. So when a sea star is walking along the ocean floor, it might find a delicious mussel to eat, and so it'll actually open up the mussel and eat it uh, from the bottom side. Now going back to the water vascular system, so water gets sucked into this sieve plate, and then what happens next is this water is going to go down all five legs of the sea star and it's going to uh, go down these things called radial canals. So there's five radial canals, one along each leg. It's only showing it on this leg just because it's showing some other structures on the other legs, but they do exist on all the legs. So water comes in, it goes through a series of canals to the radial canal. And then within the radial canal, there's these little bulbs that you see. And here's a zoomed in picture of these bulbs. These bulbs get filled with that water. These bulbs are called ampullae. So these ampullae get filled with water and they kind of look like turkey basters. And what the sea star can do is it can control those ampullae or those turkey basters by uh, using muscles to uh, to squeeze them. Well, when you squeeze a turkey baster, you know that water, or turkey based, uh, comes out. And so it squeezes and it pushes that out. Well, it's the same thing that happens here. The sea star is going to push on those ampullae. Those ampullae are going to squeeze that water out, and it's going to shoot that water out, and it's going to cause a movement. If you think about, you know, that water flying out pretty quickly, that water is moving. And so that's what the sea star is actually using. So by squeezing these little bulbs, it's going to shoot out water. And then they're going to reinflate those ampullae with more water that they take in from the sieve plate. So really, really cool and very unique in the animal kingdom. Most other organisms are moving using muscular charm. And while the sea star is using some muscles to operate those ampullae, it's not using them to physically move the arms. It's using water to move the arms. So although this diagram has tons of different other vocabulary words, the only ones I expect you to know are the ones that are outlined in red, the ones we just talked about. You should know what their purpose is, and you should kind of essentially know the basics of how the water vascular system is. But what I'd like you to do, this is also our last slide for phylum Echinodermata. And again, this was specifically sea star anatomy. Uh, other organisms in the Echinodermata do not use a water vascular system. So this is pretty unique to sea stars. Now this video here is a, uh, a really good diagram of how uh, this organism works. Uh, so definitely go take a look at it. Uh, that's going to be popping up here in just a moment, uh, but this video is actually going to end. So finish up this video and then just go watch that video before starting our last video on our last phylum. So pause here, or really end here, take a look at this video popping up, and then I'll see you in the next video.